Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Srina Sringa Jaina Sringa Jai Jai Srina Sringa Palada Desha Jaya Padma Mukha Padma Bringam Ugram Virya Mahavishnu Jwalantam Sarvato Mukham The Sringa Bishinam Badram Mityam Mityam Namami Aham Vagisya Yasya Badane Lakshmir Yasya Shivakshisi Yasya Tam Ridayam Sambit Tam the Sringa Aham Bajay that's the Mula Mantra for Lord Nasringadev along with the glorification mantra of Lakshmi Nasringadev. So Ma Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gondavani Pacharine Nirvishesha shunyavadi pasyatya desatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nithananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Ghor Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Ramadi Murti Shukalani Amena Tishtana Navatara Akaro Bhuvanesha Kinchu Krishna Swayam Samabhavat Paraman Pamanyo Govindam Adipurusham Tamaham Bhajami Sri Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead Ishwar Parma Krishna Satchit Ananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karna Karnam he is, the, he is the original, supreme source of all existence. All manifestations of the Godhead are coming from the original source. Therefore, he is called Adi Purush, the original personality. And he is Sarva Karna Karnam. He's the cause of all causes. The manifestations or incarnations of the Lord are as numerous as the waves of the ocean, the, speed, the grains of sands on all the beaches of the universe, as numerous as the, the number of snowflakes in existence, the numerous as the number of leaves on the trees throughout the existence. No one can count the incarnations of the Lord. It's not possible. Even the Lord himself, who takes the form of Anantadev, who sits on the bottom of the universes, and he holds up the universes on his head. He is, he is trying to count or name all the different forms of the Lord. He has not reached the end, nor will he ever reach the end. When we say God is great, we, we don't really say much. But when we understand a little bit about his greatness, as far as the details, we get a little indication of the greatness of God. How great he is, there's nobody can understand that. In fact, it says that even God himself can't understand how great he is. It's mentioned that when he tries to estimate his own grace, greatness, he becomes greater. And he's always expanding his greatness because spirit is always expanding. It's never static. It's unlimited. It's dynamic. It's always ever increasing. So even Krishna is always expanding his greatness continuously. But one of his most amazing, we used to call that adbuta. Adbuta means wonderful. 
the most unique, most, most wonderful, most unusual, the most, uh, what's the word, unbelievable form of the Lord is Bhagavan Dasrangadev. Half man, half lion. <laughs> I remember when I was in uh, Chicago, I was giving a lecture, and some students came from a very progressive local school. These students were very intelligent. It was actually a Rudolf Steiner school. Well, uh, what is that called? What's the name of that school? Waldorf. Huh? Waldorf School. Yeah, yeah. And this school, these kids were really sharp. So when they came in, they were looking all over the temple. We had one photo, a large photo, actually a framed picture on the wall of Nisringadev tearing apart Harani Kasipu with Prahlad standing there with a garland next to him. So when I gave my lecture, I uh, was, you know, I called for questions. And one 11 year old girl, she said, she pointed to the picture, she said, What's that? I said, That's God. <laughs> <laughs> and it's God who rids the worlds of evil. So, what you see there is, was one of the most evil persons in existence, and he's being killed by the Lord. And she and the rest of the class thought, That's great. <laughs> <laughs> And not even devotees don't even think like that sometimes. <laughs> but she really liked it. She wanted to hear more about the Shrinkadev. So I actually turned my attention to that subject. <laughs> but the Shrinkadev is the most amazing manifestation of incarnation. And uh, he, he appeared in that particular way according to the benedictions given to Harani Kashipu by Lord Brahma. The Lord didn't have to listen to Brahma, nor did he have to listen to anybody's benedictions or rules or anything, but he did. He followed the program by incarnating, because Harani Kashipu had performed so many austerities. His austerities were indescribable and unlimited, he was able to maintain his body without having any flesh, only bones. He was standing on his tippy toes with his arms straight up in the air for 1,000 celestial years, simply keeping his life air circulating through his bones through the pranayama system. He was expert at pranayama. And during that time, an anthill built around his body and simply devoured his whole body. He had no body left. But he was still alive because the soul is not really a part of the body. So he was alive, but he was in a kind of a meditation. Brahma came and said, Rani Kashipu, your austerities are, have reached perfection. Please take any benediction you want from me. Now, Srila Prabhupada describes that the materialists, they want to enjoy material life as much as possible. And the materialists are very afraid of death. And therefore, death means the end of all their plans. And so, his logical request was, I want to live forever. I want to be immortal. Please give me that benediction. Brahma said, I can't do that because I am not immortal. <laughs> Although I live, Brahma lives 311 trillion, 40 billion years. Still, he has to die after that time. <laughs> so he said, I can't do that. So Harani Kashipu, thinking that he could outsmart death, figured out all the ways you could possibly die by a man, by an animal, by a natural calamity, by water, by fire, by so many ways that death may come, by not dying on land, not dying in sea, not dying in the air, not dying 
during the daytime, not dying during the nighttime. He listed all the possible ways that time or a force of death could fall upon him. And Brahma granted every one of those benedictions. And then after that, he thought, I'm immortal. I can live forever. And now he was making his plans to enjoy. And the demons, what do they do? They want to enjoy by wanting to control. So that's their whole program, to control and try to enjoy. So Harani Kasipu just went and started to conquer the whole universe. He conquered the heavenly planets, the lower planets, the middle planets. He became the undisputed ruler of the entire universal display, all the way up to Brahma Loka. Powerful. He had all the demigods fearful of him except Brahma, Shiva, and Narada Muni. Only those three de demigods were not f afraid of Narada Muni, I mean afraid of Har uh, Harani Kashipu, and were not influenced by his power. And now he was just enjoying, he was stealing, he stole Lord Indra's throne. He was sitting on the throne of Indra, he took it over, he took over the whole heavenly planets. So powerful. There's no demon in the world that's ever been, ever been powerful as Sarandi Kashipu. Not even Ravana was that great. Yeah. <laughs> and, but now, it's interesting because everything possible in existence was at his disposal. He had everything. But the one thing he didn't have was happiness. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't happy. <laughs> and this is an because this is mentioned throughout the, the, this detailed narration of this pastime, that material things cannot satisfy. They can't. The soul is by nature pure and spiritual, and it can only be satisfied by the, its same essence. It's just like, you know, trying to feed... Um, a dummy. <laughs> a dummy is a dead body. It's just a dummy. And if you give it food, you tell you, my dear dummy, go to rest and sleep nicely. And here, here's some nice pizza or some Croatian strudel, you know. <laughs> and I mean, that's pretty good stuff. <laughs> I'm, one of the, I'm one of the fans. I'm, I'm high, on, high on the list. <laughs> I hope they made some tonight. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you give everything to the dummy and the dummy doesn't get anything because he's a dummy. <laughs> so when you try to find happiness through the senses, the mind, the body, the intelligence, you get a little bit of relief from temporary suffering, but that's all. You never get happiness. Happiness is something that is your nature. And that's only on the spiritual platform. So despite Harani Kashipu's success in acquiring everything possible, he wasn't happy. Wasn't happy. And so now, but you know, it's interesting. The Lord loves his devotees so much that he gave Harani Kashipu a son that could save him. <laughs> They say, if you have a child, and that child becomes a pure devotee, and you're just like not up to the standard, that child can bring you back to Godhead. It's true. That's why they say sometimes the, the son saves the father from hellish life. And even if the father goes into hellish life, then the son does puja afterwards, and the 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 father can be relieved of hellish life, can also attain heavenly planets. So when you have a good child, either boy or girl, because when it comes to devotional service, it's not just son, it's any child. It's not that you take it easy and let your kid become a pure devotee. <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's, it's not the idea. But if, if it just happens that way by circumstance, then you get the mercy. So the Lord gave him a pure devotee's son. He was 
a Maha Bhagavat, that's not just a pure devotee, but he's on the highest platform of devotional service. How did, how did he get a son like that? There's, you, you know what Garbhadan Samskara is? Those of you who are married, you have to purify yourself before you take union with your wife and husband in order to produce a son or a daughter that is saintly. So Harani Kasipu, after acquiring so much power and control, he wanted more. He wanted more. So he left home and he went to a, a secluded place by a particular mountain and he started performing more austerities. And then the demigods were thinking, oh no, this guy's already so powerful. He's wrecking our, <laughs> our planets. If he becomes any more powerful, that's the end of us. But then Narada Muni jumped into it and he saved the day. So Narada Muni, he has the power of changing his form. So he changed his form into a beautiful dove bird, a bird that's like a dove. And so when Harani Kasipu was trying to perform his austerity, this Narada Rish was flying around, right around, and chanting the name of Vishnu. <laughs> and so every time he would get, get angry at the bird, he'd throw something at him, or he'd try to stop the bird, the bird would fly away, and then he'd go back to his austerity. And then Narada, in the form of a bird, would come again and say, Vishnu, 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 <laughs> Vishnu, Vishnu. So that was his Garbhadan Sanskara. Yeah. <laughs> Involuntarily got purified by hearing the name of Vishnu. And right after that, when he had union with his wife, Prahlad Maharaj was the son. Yeah. That was the trick of the demigods. But it was needed. <laughs> was needed. And so now he has this son, and he's proud of his son. His son loves him, and he loves his son. A father always likes, loves the son, and is proud to have sons and daughters and whatever, you know, just like we had, we had uh, um, Tirta Sevana today, his daughter, his, he had a baby girl today, this morning at 2.30 in the morning. Congratulate him. Viva! On the Shringadev's appearance day, what, what could be more auspicious than that, having a child born on that day? She might be able to kill all the demons herself. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're really ha happy, and we also congratulate you and your, your good wife for you know, bringing great personalities into the world, and that's what they are. These are special souls that come into the family of devotees to purify the whole atmosphere and to spread Krishna consciousness. They're sent by the Lord into families that are Krishna conscious. Mm. So, Pallad Maharaj is there. And now he's going to school and his father. So one day his father said to his teachers, the Pallad's teacher, bring my son here. So he brings, they bring him. And he says, my dear son, so nice. You're going to school. I'm so proud of you. Please tell me what you learned today in school. <laughs> so I'll read what Prahlad Maharaj said. <laughs> and this is the response he gave to his father. He said, my dear father, Hearing and chanting about the transcendental holy name, form, qualities, paraphernalia, and pastimes of Lord Vishnu, remembering them, serving the lotus feet of the Lord, offering the Lord respectful worship with 16 types of paraphernalia, <laughs> offering prayers to the Lord, becoming his servant, considering the Lord's one's best friend, and surrendering everything in the Lord, including one's body, mind, and words. These are the nine processes of devotional service. <laughs> You'd think Harani Kashipu was really enjoying this, right? <laughs> no way. He's like shaking. <laughs> He's so angry. And then he finishes up, he says, well, and one who has dedicated his life to the service of Krishna through these nine methods, 
can be understood as the most learned person, and for he has acquired complete knowledge, and my dear father, you should join that club, you know. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> and so his father, he's, he's like, doesn't know what to say. He said, what happened? My son got polluted. And he calls the teachers, Sunda and Amarka, that were the two teachers. He said, what are you teaching this boy? I sent him to school to become a good demon. <laughs> and you're here, you're making him a devotee of Vishnu. You know who Vishnu is, he's my enemy. So what are you teaching him? Sunda and Amarka said, you know, uh, be, be calm, Hirani Kashipu, because we're Brahmins, don't, don't criticize us. <laughs> yeah, that's what they said in so many words. But we don't know where he, get that, he got that knowledge from. It's not coming from anyone. All right, maybe there's some Vaishnavas sneaking in in disguise and polluting him, and all of the other students also. So be careful. Make sure you watch the school very carefully so no Vaishnavas sneak in, because Vaishnavas are kind of sneaky, right? <laughs> They say when you have to deal with cheaters, you can cheat also. <laughs> so he sends them back to school. They go there and they're trying to teach him all the rules and regulations of becoming a good demon, how to conquer your enemy. You know, if you, first, if your enemy doesn't, first thing you do is you offer some bribery to your enemy and if he doesn't go along with that, then you... Uh, you chastise him with words, and if he doesn't go along with that, you threaten him with, with uh, physical action, and if he doesn't go along with that, then you take the stick and kill him. <laughs> so that's the four principles of demonic life. <laughs> and so they're trying to teach him that. And Prahlad Maharaj is saying, uh, friends and enemies are all mental speculation. <laughs> the only friend is Krishna. <laughs> And therefore, friends and enemies are just mental ideas, that's all. Well, I, this is my friend, and this is my enemy, this is my enemy, like that. It's all, because one day it's your friend, next day it's your enemy, it's all mental concoction. So he couldn't, the teachers couldn't get anywhere with him. So they just left him alone. Then he starts preaching to his schoolmates and teaching them about devotional service. And they're nice little boys. They're also sons of demons. And uh, he says to them, you know, you should take to Krishna consciousness because the goal of, of life is to become a devotee of the Lord and worship the Lord in different ways and develop your love for Krishna. And they said, Prahlad, Prahlad, you know, we're just young boys. We're just going to school. Maybe when we grow up, then we'll worship Krishna. They were just giving him some excuse. And Prahlad Maharaj said, but this idea of growing old, old means just before you die. And no one knows when they're going to die. So he was defeating the idea that age doesn't really indicate how long you got to live. You know, sometimes we think I'm young, I got so many years ahead of me, I got so many plans. And that is generally the mood, but that's not guaranteed. Should I tell you a story? Yes. You want to hear this story? Yes. No, you don't want to hear it. Yes. <laughs> we were preaching in Mumbai, in uh, Radhagopinath Temple in Mumbai, and we were doing college programs at one medical college, JJ College, in Mumbai. And so we had started a little group, and the students were coming. And so regularly they were taking part in Krishna conscious activities and becoming really interested. We were holding our group meetings at the, at the college. So one day, we were about to come again, and one of the students, he told the rest of the students who were coming, you know, I'm going to stop coming because graduation is in four months and I want to I be the top in the class. And therefore, I'm going to spend all my time on studies. I'm going to stop this Krishna consciousness. And then he said, well, but when I graduate, I'll be back. And they said, you sure? And he said, yeah, I promise, okay. Because they were fixed. 
So he went away, he didn't start, he didn't come. And for four months he studied like anything, and when it was the class, when he, it's time for graduation, he graduated top in his class in the whole school. He was the best student in the whole school, received all kinds of honors, all kinds of opportunities for the future. Now he's like really happy. And so his friends say, well tonight, you graduated, well tonight, you know, the devotees are coming for a program at the college. So can you, you should come. You said you would be coming. He said, yeah, but you know, there's a party tonight. <laughs> and I'm supposed to go to the party. So I'm going to go to the party. You know, when you stay away from Krishna consciousness, you kind of lose the, you know, the mood. So they said, all right. So they all went to the temple and he went to the party. And he was in the party, and he, they were, he was dancing. Now he's 23 years old. He has no health problems at all. He's dancing. He has a heart attack and drops dead, right? On the dance floor, in front of many of the other students. Everyone was completely horrified and shocked beyond belief. No medical history. Young boy, top in his class, best medical student in the entire college, very prestigious university, all of a sudden. When that happened, all of those devotees that were coming, all those students that were coming to the class, they became really serious. <laughs> they became really, really serious. I remember I was giving a lecture in New Jersey one time, and. There was a, this was just, it was an Indian congregation, 100% Indians. And right next door, and it was like a big hall, and next door to the hall there was a fire department. So I thought, what can I speak about? I think I'll speak about death. Yeah, I thought that would be an interesting subject. <laughs> so I read from Bhagavad Gita chapter 2, the difference between the, the soul and the body. And I'm speaking the whole class on death, right? And I'm just one point after another. While I'm speaking, there's an, a man, he's sitting in the chair, and all of a sudden he falls out of the chair and falls on the ground. He's out cold during my lecture on death. <laughs> so I'm thinking, this really helps my lecture a lot. <laughs> <laughs> And everybody was like, whoa, shocked. People were running to come over and see what they could do. And then fortunately, the fire department was next door and they came with, a, with their men and they took him away. And, and then everybody was wondering. And then my, boy, the attention for the class really got much better. <laughs> everybody was really listening. <laughs> so then the lecture became even better and better. But the report was, <clears throat> what happened was, he had diabetes and he had a diabetic attack. <laughs> so fortunately he didn't die. But it was a good, it was a good show because it helped, <laughs> it helped the class a lot. <laughs> and people really appreciated my lecture afterwards and they were, you know, they were in a whole different mood than from the beginning of the class. <laughs> so, yeah, so, the materialists, this is their problem. They can do everything, but they can't conquer over death. So Harani Kashipu was thinking, now I've conquered death. So Pallad Maharaj was telling his schoolmates, you know, you can't depend on time, because time can catch up with you at any moment. Krishna consciousness is now. It can't wait for the future. It is now. Sometimes we're making so many plans to do so many things. I'll be Krishna conscious after I get that, or when after I do that, or when after I... In other words, no. It's the, it's, the, it's the need of the time. Because Krishna consciousness is the eternal platform of happiness for all living entities. When you're Krishna conscious, you're happy. Truly happy. Always happy. No circumstance can disturb your happiness. And uh, so now, you know, 
Sandana marker is supposed to work on Prahlad and, you know, reprogram him. So after some time, they bring him back to his father, Harani Kashipu. And now Harani Kashipu is waiting. He's saying, oh, my dear son, I know you were polluted, but now everything is all right. So he asks him again. He says, please tell me now what you have learned from your teachers. And please tell me how you have understood this knowledge. And he said, and then Prahlad Maharaj said, Matir na Krishna parato svato va mvithu bhavati yati griha vritanam adantar gobi visitam tirisram punas punas charanitaranam. Prahlad Maharaj said, because of their uncontrolled senses, persons too addicted to materialist life we could make progress to hellish conditions and repeatedly chew that which has already been chewed. Their inclinations towards Krishna are never aroused, either by the instructions of others, by their own efforts, or by a combination of both. And then he went on, he said, and then he spoke another verse, he said, Persons who are strongly entrapped by the consciousness of enjoying material life and who have therefore accepted as their leader or a guru a similar blind man attached to external sense objects cannot understand the goal of life is to return home back to Godhead and engage in the service of the Lord. As blind men, guided by another blind man, miss the right path and fall into a ditch, materially attached men led by another materially attached man are bound by the ropes of fruit of labor, which are made of strong cords, and they continue again and again in materialistic life, suffering the threefold miseries. Uh, Harani Kashipu is like, he's trembling in anger. He can't even speak, he's so angry. And then Prahlad puts the, the topper on the cake, you know, this is the cherry. <laughs> he says, unless they smear upon their bodies the dust, the dust of the lotus feet of a Vaishnav, completely freed from material contaminations, persons very much inclined towards materialistic life cannot be attached to the lotus feet of the Lord who is glorified for his uncommon activities. Only by becoming Krishna conscious, and taking shelter at the lotus feet of the Lord in this way can one be freed from material contamination. Prahlad Maharaj is sitting on the fa his father's lap. After he spoke, Harani Kasipu became blinded with anger. He took his son and threw him on the ground. He was so his my he was so his eyes became red. He was he was just said, take this boy away. He deserves to be killed and kill him as soon as possible. Now you can see something from this. The demons have no regard for anyone. Prabhupada said something and he said it many times. The demons will do anything. They will do anything. They'll kill their parents. They'll kill their friends. They'll kill anyone just to satisfy their own lusty desires. That's a demon. And so here, an innocent boy, what was his fault? He was Krishna conscious. That's all. His only fault was that he was Krishna conscious. And so, now, uh, he's given under the charge of the servants of Harani Kashibu. So what do they do? They take him and they try to stab him with spears and tridents. Nothing happens. They take him in a pit of very dangerous snakes. They throw him in there. The snakes do absolutely nothing. They take him. They put him in boiling hot oil. The oil had no effect. Prahlad Maharaj was completely absorbed in thinking of the lotus feet of the Lord. Now Prabhupada said, this is available for all of us. In other words, if one becomes as good as Prahlad, in other words, 
fully absorbed in Krishna, nothing material can help you, can hurt you. It's not some exaggeration, it's actually a proven fact. There are many, many examples in our Hiskan society where devotees have been in the most horrible situations but have become completely unscathed, completely free from any dangers because they remember Krishna with devotion. So they're trying everything to kill him. They take him onto a mountain, they throw him off the mountain. You see the picture, he's falling off the mountain and on the bottom there's Krishna catching him. <laughs> they try everything. He, Tarani Kashipu had a sister. Her name was, what was her name? Holika. 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 She had the benediction she could not be burned by fire. So they decided to burn her, uh, to burn Prahlad by putting Prahlad on her lap and then starting a fire around both of them. She burned to death and Pallad got away. <laughs> Krishna protected him. His father said, now throw him in the ocean and throw a mountain on top of him. They did that. Still, nothing. Even, even the slightest hair on his body wasn't disturbed by his father's attempt to kill him in so many ways. That was the power of the Lord's protection. It's complete because Krishna is all-powerful. And if he wants to give you protection, nobody can have hurt you. And if he and if if some if he wants if Krishna wants to kill you, you can't save yourself. And nobody can save you. Raki Krishna, Morike, Mori Krishna, Raki K. And that by one who is protected by Krishna, they're protected. And one who's not, there's no protection. So that was Prahlad. And so now his father is starting to see, oh, well, this boy is really, he's got some power. <laughs> so he's getting a little bit nervous because he can't kill his son. So finally, towards the end, he's, you know, he's using different methods. And finally, he's getting a little bit more and more disturbed. So now, again, he brings his son into it. And, and you know, Prahlad still likes his father. His father is trying to kill him, and he's not even feeling any negativity towards his father. He knows this is my father. He calls him Asurya Bhajya. My dear father, you are the best of all demons. <laughs> it was like a compliment. <laughs> Asura Bhajya, you are the best of all demons. He knew he was a demon, and he knew he was the best, but he was his father. And as a son, he actually loved his father, although his father was trying to kill him. His, his affection for his father was not disturbed by what his father was doing. That's a Vaishnava. A Vaishnava is others may be negative towards you, but a devotee doesn't become negative towards those who are negative. They see oh, this is their... This is their bad qualities. It's just the shadow of the real person. The real, everybody has good qualities. And when you see bad qualities in someone, that's their shadow. It's not them. So if you hold on to the shadow, then you find faults. But if you see them for who they are, they're pure spirit souls. They're in the particular body. They actually have love for Krishna in their heart. Although they're covered over, they can't experience it or even ex display it. Still, a devotee knows that all living entities are not only part and parcel of Krishna, but are very dear to Krishna. Even the demons are dear to Krishna. Because they're also his sons and daughters. So now, Rani Kasipu, He's thinking, and, he's, he, and he says, My dear son Prahlad, where do you get your power from? What was Prahlad's answer? I get my power from the same place you get your power. <laughs> the same place everybody gets their power. From God. From Vishnu. Oh, that's the last thing he wanted to hear. <laughs> Rani Kashipu said, My power is my power. 
And so, and then he said to Pallad, where is this Vishnu that you worship? He said, he's everywhere, Father. <laughs> and he said, and then he started pointing in different directions. And Rani Kashipu then took out his sword. He said, you know, no one could kill you, but I'm going to kill you. <laughs> but before he did that, he said, is your Vishnu here to protect you? Will he come and save you? Where is he? Is he in this pillar? And he took out his sword and he smashed the pillar with his sword. And then something happened. <laughs> I'll read. He heard a sound. He heard a wonderful, tumultuous sound which was never heard before. Upon hearing the sound, the other leaders of the demons were afraid. None of them in the assembly could find the origin of the sound. In order to prove the statement of his servant, Prahlad Maharaj, that he is everywhere, the Lord appeared even within the pillar. And he appeared in a most wonderful form. Half man, half lion. While Harani Kasipu was looking around to find the source of that sound, he could not ascertain. And then he saw something that would be the last thing he saw. <laughs> and, it's, and then he saw this form. And when the Shringadev came out, <laughs> he was really, like, angry. <laughs> And he, you know, Harani Kashipu is looking. And he's studying the form, trying to decide, what is it? And he's saying, this is some trick to kill me. Nobody can kill me. <laughs> the Lord's form was extremely fearsome. Have you ever seen any of the forms of Nishringadev when he comes out of the pillar? Uh, very fierce. He only sees one thing. Rani Kashipu, and so on. And his eyes were angry. They resembled hot copper, molten gold, shining mane, fearful face, deadly teeth, razor sharp tongue, which was moving back and forth in his mouth. It was like a dueling sword. His ears were erect and motionless. His nostrils and gaping mouth appeared like caves of a mountain. His jaws parted fearfully and the entire, his entire body touched the sky. His neck was very short and thick, his chest broad, his waist thin, the hairs on his body were as white of the rays on the moon. His arms, which resemble flanks of soldiers, spread in all directions. As he killed the demons, rogues, and atheists with his conch shell, this club, lotus, and natural weapons, Arani Kashipu started to speak to himself. Lord Vishnu, who possesses great mystic power, has made this plan to kill me. But what is the use of such attempt? Who can fight with me? This is, this is the arrogance of the demons. Because they have power, material power, they think... Nobody can hurt me. I got guards, I got money, I got weapons, I got armies, I got so much security. I also have my own power. Nobody can, nobody can affect me. Who can fight with me, he said. Thinking like this, he took up his club and then he attacked the Lord, just like a lion attacks an elephant, fast. Just as a small insect falls forcibly in the fire and an insignificant creature becomes invisible, when Harani Kasipu attacked the Lord, who was full of shining effulgence, Harani Kasipu became invisible. They couldn't see him. <laughs> this was not all this astonishing because the Lord's effulgence can cover the entire universe. Thereafter, the great demon, who was extremely angry, he again came out at Nishringadev with his club. This is an interesting fight. It would be really good special effects for a movie. <laughs> I mean, really, you can see this powerful 
half man, half lion, gigantic, covering practically everything. And this Harani Kashipu, he could fly. He had that power to fly, so he's flying through the air, trying to fight with Nisringadev. And, and then, then Lord Nisringadev decided to, you know, put a closing on the show. So he grabbed him, just as a Garuda grabs a snake. And then he put him on his lap. And he, but he slipped out and got away. And then, oh, the demigods think, oh no, what's <laughs> happened? Who go, the Lord's losing the battle. <laughs> and they got nervous and they started to hide. And the demons started to feel good. <laughs> when Harani Kashipu got freed, he thought, he thought, the Lord's afraid of me. Well, at least this person who thinks he's a, the Lord is afraid of me. So he took a little break, you know, took a little rest, and just, you know, started to, you know, you know, maybe had a, a cup of tea or something, but <laughs> he took a break and relaxed a little bit, just rechecked his weapons. <laughs> chai, chai, chai. <laughs> and so then he, 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 he felt a little renewed and he got back into the action again. And this time when he, he charged that to the Lord, he made a laughter sound, and the Lord grabbed him, and he was very powerful. He was protecting himself in so much, he was like the speed of a hawk. You can imagine how fast a hawk is. So, and then, Nisringadev, and finally Nisringadev thought, okay, fun's over. <laughs> so he grabbed him, he captured Rani Kashipu, just like the, a thunderbolt is used by Indra to pierce a mountain. And then the Lord put him on his thighs, and then he grabbed his nails, Raja Naka, Raja Naka, Raja, powerful nails, and he performed a perfect heart operation. <laughs> really. The patient died the operation was successful. <laughs> yeah. And the Lord was still quite angry, and he tore him apart. But at one point, the Lord knew that this is my devotee, and so he took his entrails out of his body, and he wrapped it around his neck. So he, Karani Kashipu got the chance to garland the Lord with his intestines. And the Lord did that just to give him some special mercy. You're all enjoying this? <laughs> okay. It gets even, imagine if you're watching this in live, you know, technicolor. <laughs> and so then the Lord finished him. And then the Lord just took his body and threw it. And then there were thousands and thousands of demoniac followers all ready to fight with the Lord. And you can see the picture. They all came charging at the Lord. And the Lord manifested 16 arms, <laughs> eight on each side, and he was just dispatching the demons to the, to the abode of Yamaraj, one after another. And it was, he, after a while, there was just nothing left. <laughs> And now there's a, and the Lord is still angry. Why is he angry? He's angry because Rani Kashipu offended his pure devotee. That was his anger. When the demigods had asked the Lord to appear earlier, many years earlier, the Lord said, I know anything about Rani Kashipu, but I'm going to wait until he harasses my devotee. And then I'll do something. So that's how dear the devotee is to the Lord. The Lord will act for his devotee always, because the Lord says, the devotee is in my heart, and I am in the heart of my devotee. My devotee knows no one but me, and I know no one but my devotee. A devotee becomes very dear to the Lord. To become a devotee of the Lord means to get the full mercy and power of the Lord. The devotee becomes almost as powerful as the Lord himself, because the devotee gets the mercy of the Lord 
from the Lord, the Lord gives him all protection and all power. That's why devotees are very, very powerful. Devotees have all mystic power, but they don't use it. They don't use it. Why? Because they don't have any need to it. But if they have to, they can use it because it's the Lord's power which he gives to his devotee. So now the Lord is super angry. The demigods are happy, they're cheering, they're all they're dancing in the heavenly planets, the Apsaras are dancing, the Gandharas are singing, and there's a big concert in the heavenly planets and everybody is so happy that demon was finally killed. And then what happens? Now but Harani Kashipu, I mean I'm sorry, Nishringadev was still angry. And now the demigods come to offer their prayers. And they're all watching the Lord from a distance. Nobody's going no, near the Lord. Nobody. Nobody's going near the Lord. And then Brahma is there, and he knows that the Lord is there, and he turns to Lakshmi Devi, and he says, Lakshmi, that's your husband. Go, you know, quiet him down, <laughs> settle him down. She said, Brahmaji, I know my husband, but I don't know that one as my husband. <laughs> I've never seen him in that, in that way. I'm not going. <laughs> she was scared also. So Brahma tried to get so many demigods to come to pacify the Lord, but nobody come. Then he went to Prahlad. He said, my dear Pallad, the Lord came for you, so please pacify him. So the Lord was there, and you see the picture, little Pallad is walking with a garland in a very humble way, ready to uh, garland the killer of his father. <laughs> and then the Lord turns and he sees his pure devotee, and the Lord becomes calm. And then he picks up Prahlad and puts him on his lap. And there's a beautiful, beautiful exchange between the Lord and his devotee. The Lord is so happy to be with his devotee. The devotee is so happy to be with the Lord. The Lord, Prahlad, offers him so many beautiful prayers, glorifying the Lord in so many ways. And then after the Lord hears all the beautiful prayers from his, beautiful, from his pure devotee, the Lord says to him, Take a benediction. I want to give you something. You've shown your love for me. Please, I want to offer you something. Please take a benediction. Prahlad Maharaj says, I'm not a merchant. I don't worship you for something. I worship you out of love. That's my happiness. There's no, I don't really want anything. The Lord now, when the Lord wants to give you something, and it's hard to refuse, <laughs> Prabhupada used to say, what can you hold in two arms that Krishna is giving you with ten? And what can you keep in two arms that Krishna is taking away with ten? <laughs> so if he wants to give you something, you're going to get it. <laughs> So the Lord was persistent, and he kept asking Prahlad. Prahlad said, all right, if you really want to give me something, then please liberate my father. That's all he asked for. The Shringadev said, that's already done. <laughs> He's already liberated. As soon as, I, as, soon as I, he, he left his body, he attained liberation. Take something else. Ask for something else. And Prahlad was thinking. And then he came up. My dear Lord, if you really want to give me something, let me stay in this material world and preach to these non-devotees who have made a mess of civilization. <laughs> let me preach to those persons who are not Krishna conscious. That's all he asked for, just to be an instrument for the Lord's mercy to spread Krishna consciousness to others. When the Lord heard that, the Lord didn't know what to say. <laughs> he was speechless in, the, in front of his devotee. 
And he granted him that benediction and, and of course Prahlad Maharaj became the king and then when he was ruling as a king he did so many wonderful services to spread Krishna consciousness. So the Lord was so happy with Prahlad Maharaj. So Prahlad Maharaj was a very special devotee in the sense that he was only five years old. But he knew everything about devotional life and he had attained perfection at such a young age. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would go visit Gadadhar Pandit in, in Jagannath Puri, Gadadhar Pandit was so sweet, so gentle, so innocent, so humble. The Lord would like to hear Srimad Bhagavatam from Gadadhar. So he said to Gadadhar, can you read the pastime of Prahlad Maharaj from Bhagavatam? And then Gadadhar would bring out his Bhagavatam and he would read the entire pastime. And then after it was all over, the Lord said, read it again. And he would read it again. And then when it was finished, the second time, the Lord would say, read it again. And Vrindavan Das Thakur actually said that sometimes up to a hundred times he would hear that pastime of Prahlad Maharaj. He also liked the pastime of Dhruva Maharaj, two five-year-old boys. So the Lord was one of his favorite pastimes was to hear the story of Prahlad Maharaj. How he faced his demoniac father with not even the slightest bit of fear or enmity towards his father and remained fully Krishna consciousness. So, and, and Srila Prabhupada towards his last days with us in 1977, he spoke mostly on Prahlad Maharaj. All the last lectures that Prabhupada gave were all centered on Prahlad Maharaj. And he had done that at least two other times while he was preaching and traveling. So Srila Prabhupada also, you can see many times, you can hear it, when Prabhupada's talking about Prahlad Maharaj and his devotion, he goes silent for a minute. And he's like feeling such love for Prahlad Maharaj. And Prabhupada becomes stunned to, to un to just to appreciate what devotion that Prahlad Maharaj had. And so, and because of Prahlad Maharaj, Harani Kashipu got a benediction. He got killed by the Lord. If he would have been killed by any other source, he wouldn't have got the same benediction. And that was his good fortune. So, Nishringadev, he is with us today by here, Nishingo Ridaye Nishingo. And wherever you go, Nishringadev is there. He's very kind to his devotees. And this ISKCON society, there are literally, I'm not exaggerating, hundreds of stories that devotees can tell about their experience with Lord Nishringadev. Pankajangri Prabhu, that wonderful devotee from Mayapur who just recently departed the world, he wrote a, a small book on all the pastimes of Nishringadev, describing uh, how devotees were always in trouble and came to him for pujas and for benedictions from Lord Nishringadev. Nishringadev was very, very personal. I told one story this morning, but maybe for those of you who weren't here, how kind Nishringadev is. Although he's very fierce by nature, it says that a lioness, a female lion, is very ferocious towards other animals, but to her own little cubs, she's like a sweet mother. <laughs> so for a devotee, Nishringadev is really like a loving father. But for the non-devotee demons, he's death personified. One devotee from Mayapur, his father was quite sick, so they had brought him into the hospital, and it was determined that he had some terminal disease and he wasn't going to live long. 
So his son, he wanted to help his father, so he said to his father, you know, you should chant Hare Krishna. You know, if you leave this world chanting Hare Krishna, then you can go back to Godhead and you can be, you know, be saved. Now his father was not a devotee. He was favorable, but he wasn't a devotee. And so he listened to his son, but he didn't chant. He didn't chant. So the next day when he was in the hospital, he was in his hospital bed and he was looking towards the door and a strange figure appeared in the doorway, half man, half lion, and he spoke to the father. He said, you should chant that mantra you were told to chant. And then he disappeared. <laughs> That's all he said. So the father, first he became quite frightened seeing the Shringadev there. And then he started to chant, and the next day he left the body chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So the Lord actually came to show special mercy to the, the father of this devotee by giving, telling that father, this is how you can make, actually make your life perfect. That's mercy. That's kindness. And there's so many, 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 many stories. Do we have time for stories or? Hmm. Okay, questions. Uh, five, ten minutes. If there's questions, we can take it for ten minutes. Or, or any comments on the appearance of Lord Nishringa? Sri Nishringa, Jai Nishringa, Jai Jai Sri Nishringa. I'm sure some devotees here must have had some experience with Nishringadev. I know maybe you're too shy to talk about it. I can just say a story. For you. you did? I can just, yeah, one experience two years back. Lord Nasim, uh, this is the time when I was going Puri all alone. Uh, and uh, uh, the flight was really like, you can, uh, you can imagine Indian domestic flights are very shaky. Mm -hmm. Planes are very shaky. And I was alone, and it was a very thunderstorm going on, like very, very high uh, wind and things. And the plane was quite high actually. And it was literally for 15 minutes for tilted. Everything in the kitchen in the plane was throwing down, and everyone in the flight was screaming like anything. We were almost going to die. And first of all, I just did not understand because I was just chanting, chanting. I just sometimes don't remember that you need to remember the Lord, basically. And I suddenly remember I need to pray, remember to learn nursing there. And I started praying. First prayer I did Lord Namaste nursing I. And a man was sitting next to me and I just couldn't. I was crying and singing loud, so loud. I held his hand and the first time I sang full prayer, second time I sang full prayer. And after second prayer, the name was calm, like so calm. Everything was controlled around. I'm just just felt like it's magic happened. And in 30 minute time, we were safely landed, and everything was just, and everyone was crying, like I was crying loudly, like crying and singing and crying. Yeah, it's good. In 15 minutes time, it just, everything finished, and we were calmly like landed. Yeah. So it was just, felt like he just came and he held the plane in his hands. So yeah, he's there. <laughs> Yeah, I have a sister, she's a devotee also, but she's not so active in devotional service. But when she was, she told me a story just recently that uh, she was with a group of Sankirtan devotees and they were going into a mall. And they were not supposed to go in there and do Sankirtan there, it was off limits, it was illegal. So she was going in with the with the the group of devotees, there must have been about a dozen. She was towards the end, and when she got towards the door, she heard a voice and said, don't go in. So she didn't, she stayed out. And everybody got arrested, <laughs> except her. <laughs> and then she said, oh, now Shringadev came and he told me not to go in. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't go in. <laughs> Yeah, so it's a small thing, but still, it shows how the Lord protects His devotee. My sister, she's interesting. She doesn't do Krishna consciousness, 
but she likes Miss Shringadev, that's all. <laughs> so she wants to, if I talk about Miss Shringadev, then we have something in common. <laughs> Otherwise, it's, we don't know what to talk about. <laughs> yes, uh, you know. So pray for her, <laughs> so she can actually appreciate Krishna also. <laughs> And uh, Indrajumad Maharaj tells this one particular story where he was going to one place, I can't remember, somewhere in the, in the Soviet Union before. This was after the Soviet bloc dropped. And he knew this young girl, she was about eight years old when he knew her. Now he came back and it was three years later. She's about 11 and she sees her old friend uh, Maharaj. Uh, and she says, Oh, Maharaj, I saw Nishringadev. And, you know, Indrajuna Maharaj said, Yeah, I see him too. He's, there he is on the, his pictures there. <laughs> and then she said, No, no, I saw him. <laughs> and then he was thinking. And then her mother came back and she said, Yeah, she actually had an experience. She was walking across the street. And she wasn't watching her. She was going, and the car came and hit her, and knocked her all the way up in the air, and she fell on the grass on the side. She was unconscious. They took her to the hospital. The doctor said to the nurses, get the x-rays and find out what's broken. And so they did. They came back to the doctor, and they gave him the x-rays. And he looked at it, he said, Give me the x-rays of the girl. This is not the x-ray. They said, no, this is her x-ray. He says, there's nothing wrong. This is not possible. Later on, she came back to consciousness. Nothing was wrong with her. And she said, oh, when I was flying through the air, Lord Nishringadev caught me. And then she showed on her shoulder, there was two scratches on this side and two scratches. She said, but when he caught me, he scratched me. <laughs> She showed the, shit, the marks, so there's four marks like that. So, yeah, these are interesting pastimes of Lord Nishringadev. He appears to his devotees in so many ways. And in Mayapur, hundreds of times, there are so many pastimes. But we're running out of time, and uh, so we need to go on. And then there's also a very nice feast cooked by the devotees here for everyone in honor of the appearance of Lord Nishringadev. So I'll thank you very much for coming and attending this gathering. I'm so happy to see so many devotees here today. It's just so wonderful to see it feels like old times. <laughs> Give me that good old Krishna consciousness. <laughs> it's good enough for Rupa, it's good enough for Sanatan, it's good enough for me. <laughs> So thank you very much. Shri Nishringa Bhagavan Aki, Shri Palad Maharaj Aki, Mahamotsava Avir Bhav Nishringa Bhagavan Aki, Kaur Premanande, Srila Prabhupada Aki, Srila Prabhupada Aki, by Kunta Murti Ki.